Eagles mailbag delivered to the wrong address. Not really. I intercepted Rodney. and hijacked that sh I'm stealing the bag. <laughs> yeah, I'll be answering your question today. Call me a, <laughs> a questionnaire terrorist. It's the wrong topic. But anyways, what's up? It's your boy Sandra. I'll come back at you with another analysis video. <laughs> well, more like a, a question. You know, questions y'all ain't asked for. And a questionnaire or interviewee, whatever that you didn't ask for anyways. I'm going to get to it. So anyways, let's get to the, the video today. Eagles mailbag. I stole that bitch. <laughs> Jalen Carter, future NFL defensive rookie of the year, and yada, yada, yada. From a guy that I really don't like. We'll get to that later. Just, dude, he just... I have a bone to pick with this motherfucker. I might have to email this later, man. All right. Um, I'm playing, but I'm actually not playing because I might later. Anyways, um, question from... Who cares? Do you think Jalen Carter has a legit shot at defensive rookie of the year, or will the Eagles rotation cut into his production? I definitely think that he's not going to get it. I mean, look at the past. D-tackles who um, have been drafted highly, not just in the first round, um, but Chris Jones, his first year. The Sexy Dexy, Dexter Lawrence, his first year. Fletcher Cox, his first year. I mean, hell, Corey Simon, you can look at, you know, historically, D ends, I mean, D tackles do not produce in the first year. It takes them around three years to get acclimated to the NFL to make, you know, start making a real impact on the game. And also, it's coming via rotation. We rotate guys heavily on the inside and on, on the outside as well. So that limits, you know, their um, exposure to <laughs> snaps on the field. Um, and by way of that, making mark their mark on the um, on on uh, on the stat in the stat sheets and, and on the defense because not I mean not like a, a you know a th uh, third down uh, pass rusher a DN or uh, outside rush linebacker they can come in and just get sacks primarily focused on getting up the quarterback you know because they're, that's the specialized package they've been placed in but you know. D tackle is a little bit more complicated. The, those guys don't typically produce in a rush game. One outlier in recent history being Aaron Donald. He came in and had nine sacks his first year, but like I said, that's an outlier. Um, don't count on him making a you know a huge impact. Don't I mean get me wrong? He's gonna do more than just stuff the stat sheet. He's going to uh, when you look at you know past the the game records and logs, it's gonna be you know impact felt on film and um, felt amongst his peers by way of him, you know, affecting, you know, the quarterback and, and you know, the running game as well, stuffing the run. So um, those might not be flashy um, and the numbers might not be big, but he's definitely going to uh, impact the game, just not with, you know, swaying the voters' hearts and things like that. So, you know, it is what it is. I mean, that's kind of, I'd rather have that. Like Jordan Davis didn't have nearly the impact statistically that, you know, people wanted last year, but man, was he effective especially before he got hurt. All right, next question. When the Eagles face the Cardinals week 17, will Jonathan Gannon still be the coach? Definitely think so, man. They signed up to like a four or five year deal. You know I mean? You don't just throw that away in one year unless he looks absolutely atrocious. Yeah, I do, do believe he's a hack job and a fraud, but even I believe as bad as he is, he gets more than a year. And it's, it just looks extremely bad. I mean, it things have to go catastrophically wrong um, for him to be a one and done coach. And, he, you know, because they... Coaches guarantee uh, contracts are guaranteed, so you're on the hook for all that money. <laughs> I wouldn't be, want to be the one making those decisions as a GM, bringing him in, and just tell him, you know, here's your pink slip, and uh, yeah, well, we'll, you can still cash those checks. Man, that has to hurt. I mean, not financially because these owners are billionaires, but just in you know their ego, bring <laughs> to be brought down a notch in their pride. Um, next question: Do the Eagles have a legitimate chance at getting same or more sacks than last year? No, we're not. I mean, I, I'm not saying what's the ballpark you're, you're talking about. I, I'd say Doc is down for maybe 40, 50, which would be, you know, it's really still a really solid year. Um, you know, maybe give you, put you in, you know, the top 10, um, I'll 40, maybe top 15, 50, definitely top 10 um, in sack numbers. But a historical year like that, we were number three in history overall with 70 sacks. Um, and a few away from setting a record, you know, from the, I think it was the 85 Bears. But, I mean, it's just uh, 87 Bears, I want to say, 88. Wasn't the one that won the champ, I think. But, um, man, it, it's crazy that, like, you know, people just see that, oh, we brought in Joe Carr, he's going to replace Javon Hargrave, he might be better than him, eventually. But not this year. 
And um, Nolan Smith, he's you know he's a greenhorn. He's coming in as a rookie. Um, yes, we brought back uh, Josh Sweat, who had 11 sacks. You know, Hassan Reddick, who had 16 sacks. Brandon Graham, who had 11 sacks, coming off the bench. Um, Milton Williams had four. Fletcher Cox, you know, resigned. He had seven. Um, albeit, you know, he ate from other guys. And, yeah, the, for the most part, your guys are still there. But that being said, it's just a different dynamic. And you can't erase all the experience and all the, you know, the pass rushing pressure that, you know, Javon Hargrave brought to the frame. Um, it hurts to see him go. I wish he would have went to the AFC, you know, but it is what it is. Um, I think we'll beat him anyway. So uh, we still have that great offensive line um, in place. But, yeah, I don't think we come, you know, sniff anywhere near 70. Um, but that doesn't mean, even though we don't get some of the sacks, we, you know, have um, better stoppage rates, um, better pressure rates. Sacks aren't the end-all, be-all. I know it looks good to the fans, but, you know, that's just for us. <laughs> All right, next question or addendum. The most immediate question or rather concern is it's scheduled out to the bye. It is giving me complete and utter anxiety. We didn't experience anything that intense all last year. Hey, last year's last year. Um, yes, you can't just look at, you know, um, the records of these teams. The Cowboys, um, we can beat them. The Chiefs, we, you know, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Lost 38 to 35. The Bills, we didn't play them last year, but um, Josh Allen can be pressured. The 49ers, you're not a quarterback out the game. And um, made them one-dimensional. And even if they play a new quarterback, um, you know, it's, it's adjustments. Um, or even it's Brock Purdy. You know, he's, has to, uh, he, he's not going to have any offseason, uh, really, you know, like he would have. Um, he's recovering from injury. And again, the Cowboys, it's hard to beat. Even if we do lose to them, it's hard to beat a team uh, twice. You know, very, you know, often teams split. So um, even if we come out of this three and two, you know, uh, there's a lot to be said for that. And, I mean, it, it's, it's got, yeah, it, it's tougher. But our defense, you know, how they play is going to be key. And also our offense could be our defense's best friend. Using the, you know, running game to, you know, minimize snaps for, you know, these quarterbacks, for, you know, De Dak Prescott, for uh, Patrick Mahomes, like we did in the first half of the Super Bowl, which was excellent, um, against Josh Allen. And, you know, giving him a little time, so hopefully forcing him into making mistakes throwing turnovers um, or causing turnovers. And, he, you know, he can be careless with the ball. Uh, 49ers, you know, pressuring their quarterback, making them making them one-dimensional and not allowing them to use their weapons. Um, yeah. And that Prescott, Prescott led the, you know, the NFL in the turnovers last year. So, I mean, it, it, we can – it's not impossible. And just because, you know, their records are great, all of these were playoff team, teams last year. It's, you know, the going is, is tough. So what? You know, get it done. Go out there and get it done. I trust the, those guys. I trust Nick Sirianni. I trust our, you know, our coaches, um, um, Johnson. I trust, you know, like, um, this, this side, you know, like, it, this is the thick of the season. You know, this is the heart of the season. So if you don't have answers by then, by, at this point in the season, or, you know, starting to figure things out, hey, it's just, it is what it is. But if you realize your defense is going to be weaker, you know, supplement Play comp comp complimentary ball. Lean on that offense. Lean on, you know, the strengths, the run game. We have, you know, a stable talent backs, you know, albeit they might not finish the season, but we'll see. But, you know, there's things we can do to mitigate, you know, um, playing against these teams, you know, attacking their weaknesses. And, you know, nobody's perfect. If there was, you know, a team, you know, we could just book it, you know, them for the championship every year. But this is why you go out there and play the game. That's why you go out there and, you know, you know do all that shit. Eat all, you know, all that, lift all these weights, as Bill Parcel, I think, once said. Anyways, next addendum. More rushing yards for the Eagles in 2023. Rashad Penny or DeAndre Swift? I would say Rashad Penny if he stays healthy, but I don't believe he'll finish his season. And just historically looking at, you know, he's never finished his season. And in consecutive seasons, he played five, played five games, I think, two years ago, and then six games last year. So, or you can reverse though, either one of those. But anyways, it still isn't good. You know, I mean, in the last three seasons, he played a total of like 17 or 18 games, which is atrocious. It's like a, a, not a, now a regular season almost, you know, 18 weeks. So um, the guy can't just can't be counted on. So I would say De DeAndre Swift. Um, and yeah, you can see why the Lions soured on him and, and why he may not be um, a true number one. But for what we do, I think he fits, he fits great. And um, we're going to open up holes for him. And I think he's a... A bit more decisive 
uh, with that 5.5 yards per carry last year um, than Miles Sanders. And that's not to, you know, take a shot at him, um, Sanders, but, you know, he just, at first size, he's like 213, 214. He goes east and west too much. You know, he gets cute. Why not just, you know, um, lean behind, you know, your pad, run behind your pads and get the yards out of there. So he's trying to do too much hero ball, especially in that um, Washington game when we, you know, when we lost. He's trying to play hero, hero ball at the end. So, all right. Next addendum, not a question, but a request. Please detail for your readers of criminal conspiracy that results in this Cowboys never planning to play a road game on three days rest, despite every other team being required to do so occasionally. Take that over the league. And, it, and the Eagles, obviously, they tried to here, but they got, you know, there wasn't enough evidence to support, you know, um, what you guys are, you know, disputing. So, it is what it is. Uh, and Cowboys suck anyway, so, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm saying that as a, as, a, as a hater, but as a hater, but can't worry about the things that you can't control. That's just like a, I, I get it. You know, for curiosity's sake, you want to have that question answered, but who the f cares? You know what I did enjoy? Um, the Cowboys lining up in uh, that weird formation to end the uh, playoff divisional game against the 49ers and uh, Zeke stacking the ball and getting blown up and then giving that Prescott no time and him going, throwing it to a, uh, um, special teams receiver who got drilled, at, you know, immediately he caught the ball to end the game, pathetically. <laughs> that was, oh man, that, <laughs> I can still, I'm going to go back and watch that after this video. <laughs> it was so pathetic. All right, anyways, next addendum. Looking back, a draft when the Eagles traded for the fourth round pick to select Ringo, you mean back at this tra past draft, 2023. How do you think they knew he was, wasn't was going at 103 or 104? Do other GMs re revel, reveal who, who they are taking? Or did Howard just roll the dice? Here he says, you know, the, he believes that, you know, they Mickey Loomis, the Saints GM, and Dave Ziegler, the Raiders GM, told him who they're taking. But, I, I, I mean, that's, I don't know. It's just hard for me to believe, you know, that's, I mean, they talk, maybe maybe that, that is, I guess, common knowledge or, you know, people believe that, but. Even if, you know, just it goes down to speculation and, and, and how you have to deduce, you can just, you know, go with, you know, okay, well, you know, they, how they look. Um, I mean, like, you know, the Saints aren't really hurting four corners and the Raiders, they didn't make, they didn't address it before. Why are they going to address it now? But maybe, but whatever, like, it, it just, how he also has intuition. He's reading the room. He's reading so much information. Um... He's reading, you know, the teams, and they, they trade it up. So um, he's looking at, you know, who's on the board and and um, who they drafted and, um, you know, whatever information they have at their disposal. But, I mean, you got to believe he has some whispers in his ear telling him in different intel. And they, they're just so pinpoint accurate as far as, like, the wealth of information they have at their disposal and feeding, you know, um, sifting through it. And kind of just deducing things and, and, and throwing out information, kind of like, you know, just drawing locks. Okay, you can pretty much guess that, you know, it's going to be A or B or C or D. And it just, it's, it's, it's an exact science. And, man, I could just say that Howie Roseman has it down. All right, next. Do you think that the Eagles' solid cornerback depth means that decent young guys like Josh Joe, Eli Ricks, and Josiah Scott will probably get plucked from the practice squad? Um... Josiah Scott, I don't think anybody wants him, but he got torched like that. Anybody wants to, I just have him. You got Ricks, potentially. Josh Joe, potentially. But, you know, just, you're limited to 53. You can't put everyone on the squad. So, you, you know, save those positions for your most valuable players. And then, ideally, players that can play multiple. Like Boston Scott, he can double as a kit returner and, you know, running back in, you know, emergency. In case, but he's number four on the depth chart. But he's also there in case, you know, um, our top guys get hurt. You know, he's an insurance policy, basically. And with Penny... And um, what's his name? Um, Swift missing games last season and in previous seasons. I think DeAndre Swift has missed at least three games in the last three seasons. Um, you just you want to make sure that your roster is you know airtight as possible. Like you just have good depth and not just crappy. You know, some a, a replacement, a filler, a guy who's just a body, just a jag, or just another guy. You want to have guys that can come in and and make. Um, and, and take meaningful snaps and, and do something with those, um, have an impact when they do play. So um, I think a cornerback room, I mean, like even we have this, he has making a squad. 
Darius Slay, James Reverie as our starters, Vontae Madison in the slot, Zach McPherson, maybe inside outside versatility, Keaton Ringo, how you know, highly invested he traded a you know future 2024 third round pick, um, and drafting with the fourth round pick. So I mean like that it's a high investment, you know, the guy and that's not gonna be on the practice squad, even if he can't contribute immediately, even if there's guys kind of ahead of him, he's a futures pick. You know, he's he's gonna be here, you know, for the next four years. Um, Reed Williams and Hummer making the squad, I think that's a mistake. I would keep maybe one, two, three, four, five, six. And maybe Greedy can also play inside outside. I don't know. But you know, he has, you know, he's a former starter and he has a pedigree. Second round pick of the Browns, I think in 2019, uh, runs a four, three, eight. I mean the guy's six foot two, two hundred pounds. I mean he has some of the intangibles, but you know, just hurt and you know after he got injured, maybe lost some of his, some of his confidence. But those guys, like, uh, yeah, they, I agree with them. They went undrafted for a reason, and you don't want to, um, you don't want to over prioritize guys that are not priorities for other teams, and you know, let them chips fall where they may. Put them on the practice squad. If they get stolen, cool. It, it's a risk, risk reward, and you, you gotta, you know, be able to um, assess their talents and how, you know, see how they're valued across the league as well. You don't want to put a guy at risk like that. It'd be dumb. Like if they put Keita Ringo on, on the practice squad, of course somebody's gonna steal him away. Cause that's just that's a steal. He was seen as a potential borderline first round talent and as uh, rated in, to go in, the, you know, as a second round talent. And he went in the fourth, so that's great value in the Walmart. What percentage chance do you give on Tyler Steen starting at right guard for the season opener? Um, I think that just having a year in our system, even though he's a you know drafted as a cent center. Um, Cam Beef Jurgens has the advantage right now. Even though, you know, we want to say, maybe some people, you know, peers would say, keep him at center and, and just let Tyler Steen start and take his lumps. No, nah, I don't agree with that. The most seasoned guy should win. And um, the, the guy the guy that just best fits the, the job, uh, even though he's playing out of position, it's not such a stretch to go from, you know, center to guard because they're both interior line positions. And, you know, I think that Jurgens can prove a lot. And then just him getting playing time this year, even if it's not at his natural slash drafted position it's going to add so much to him as a starter whenever jason kelsey steps away which i believe will be next year um especially if we win the bowl so um i would say tyler seen his, his probability is low to start but um he also has versatility maybe he can play for us in a pinch at tackle as a backup swing tackle to jack driscoll so a lot of versatility there from uh that guy drafted in the third round only three 1 p.m. games. Yeah, man, the Eagles, after a hot season, you know, we are wanted. You know, so we have a lot of games that, you know, we're playing late afternoon, Monday night games. You have a Thursday night game, which is obviously the only game on that on the slate for that evening. And, yeah, people just want to see us play. It's been exciting. Jalen Hurts, you know, running the ball, throwing the ball. Um, put up a lot of points. That offense is 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 somewhat similar to a juggernaut. We're not, you know, there yet. We can use some a few pieces, but... You know, it's must-see TV when the Eagles are on, and Jalen has that swag, man, he plays with, and uh, just so dynamic, whether he's throwing or, or passing. And, you know, he just he just has that moxie. The kid just has, just has it, and he's only 24 years old, man. Great to have him in the building. So, yeah, people want to see the Eagles. They're getting what they want. Does the Christmas game being home make it at least tolerable as a beat reporter having to cover it? I don't care. The only beat I'm doing is this. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. All right, um... Next, which away games are you most looking forward to? Um, I would say definitely Seattle because it's just a test. Don't care about the city, but um, you know it, it's kind of it's a preview. Like all these these people shy away from you know wanting the pressure or you know intensity of an intense schedule or a tough schedule. We have the toughest schedule in the league, but you know that's what you you play the damn game for. You know, not it's not to win as you know the second best team or win with a you know weak schedule. You can't control your schedule, but you know you know control how you you know react basically play against these teams who's ever on schedule you try to obliterate them or you know go out and, and just beat them like we won against the colts last year 17 16 people criticize that i don't know if we got the dub right cowboys went out there and lost to some teams on you know no name team they shouldn't have lost to and you know it was all excuses and then yeah, they were doing this and they could have no you lost take that l it's hot serve to you and live with it eat that bitch all right um but yeah, definitely Seattle because you know just I want to test I want to test ourselves and I see if Gino is ready can we get to him. Um, Tampa like and you know it's cool. Um, Los Angeles and yeah, maybe because you know um, not really but it, you know it's the 
last NFC team to win the, the champ. So, you know, just kind of see what Aaron Donald is like. Again, you know, we, we faced him before, but see how we're going to do with him this year. And that is, you know, um, kind of a measuring stick of some sorts. And Kansas City definitely, I think this, this is the number one game for me because, you know, it's not even about the revenge fight. Even though you want to beat them just for the sake of bragging rights um, in the regular season, it doesn't mean anything beyond that. Um, it does help us in the win category, though, to, you know, to help build that resume to qualify for that. Uh, Bye! But, um... Yeah, I, I I want to 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 face them and it's like you said they're a measuring stick and um and to to put Mahomes in place on an equal playing field hopefully you know um, and Foxborough is just the opening game of the season it's a game that gets you riled up and you, you know you go to sleep kind of like that first night of school where you know where you get your outfit already laid out you know you already have in mind you memorize it you know at this point probably the you know the Patriots players and maybe the routines you know the, their kids names and all that stuff you know so you're just excited um, what do you do for fun? I told you, man. Boom, ba doom boom. <laughs> I'm joking, man. Anyways, you're not even here to see those jokes. You, you two can't strike me, so. Because you're not even watching, though. But it's been fun making this video. We're going to get up out of here at 9.43 at p.m. in J Japanese time. Anyways, as always, it's Fly Eagles Fly. And let's motherfucking go. Fly Freddy. Come Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron, Centron Anime, Centron Life, or Centron Laughs, or other social media.